my name's uh, David Allistone. I'm a, an artist and director from Exploring Senses CIC, which is a community interest company. We work with children and young people and local communities, uh, providing lots of combined arts and technology uh, maker activities. Maker activities are very important for young people because it allows them to um, explore their hobbies, their interests, and to increase skills and knowledge, improve confidence, overall health and well-being, and um, yeah, get them started with life. I think. Yeah, I guess. It, it, I guess regarding maker activities, what works is a. Uh, it depends on what age group. So, if we're working with teenagers, say thirteen years or even eight years upwards. Um, we use 3D pens quite a lot at the moment. So 3D pens are, is a technology that uses 3D printing material such as PLA, so cornstarch, and uh, they can learn how to make objects, so prototypes. It's, it's good fun. Um, other activities, toy hacking. So reusing toys that are destined for landfill. So basically just finding scrap materials and uh, making new hybrid creations. It's quite a surrealist activity and it allows people to learn about deconstruction, reconstruction and definitely improves confidence and well-being. Cardboard crafting is our introduction activity. Um, anyone from any age upwards can, can uh, play around with cardboards and we use like Posca pens to decorate them, scissors, duct tape. You can make costumes or, or masks or objects that like we've done in exhibition spaces it's good for neighborhood planning projects and then um, we use a 3d scanning technology uh, such as a structure sensor attached to an ipad we can 3d scan the objects uh, that could be used um, to be turned into a t-shirt graphic or it could be used to make a 3d model and then we could 3d print it so I guess with cardboard crafting or with toy hacking or with 3D pens or anything like that, we'll just use these as starting activities and then we'll create some sort of journey which the young people decide what it's going to be. Talking pictures is a, an activity, I guess, really for teenagers upwards and uh, involves the, the Korg Little Bits kits, which are a synthesizer kit. Uh, they're magnetic, you learn about how to create a, a a synthesizer sound, so an electronic sound, how to process it. And then we use just any sort of recording technology, it could be a mobile phone to capture the sounds. And then we um, we use this other piece of kit called a, a bear touch board, which is, it's like an Arduino, or, or but it also is an MP3 player. So we transfer the recorded sounds onto the uh, bear touch board. And then we um, use conductive ink and cardboard and poshka pens and wires and speakers and stuff like that to then uh, create an interactive sound art so it's, it's a really good process of learning how to make a sound and then create an artwork that people can actually touch and, and trigger sounds with it's it's fun the journey of the young people is really important to us and uh, we try not to direct too much but also we do steer them you know if need be um, what we're really trying to look for or, tr or trying to help young people achieve is, is to find out what their natural skills, their hobbies, their interests are, what they're good at. Because what we find is that quite often, whatever you're good at, what you're interested in is what you'll, you'll apply yourself to and you'll, you'll want to learn more. But quite often, you, young people don't know how to do this or they haven't, haven't ex they're just not involved in maker activities. So they don't know how to explore or experiment. So I guess our role is to facilitate and to inspire when necessary and to join the dots together. So, you know, helping other young people work with other young people. It's really fun. <laughs> Overall, everything we do is really fun. It's, um, it's not, it's completely different to an academic environment. Um, we, we kind of turn things on their heads. We are interested in outcomes, so to say that we're not interested in outcomes would be a lie, but we're not, we're not really interested in any predetermined outcomes. I mean, my analogy would be you go into a design and technology room, you're given some words, 
you're asked to make a like a bird box or something and everyone has to make the same bird box and then you're not even allowed to decorate it and I, I can't think of anything more boring than just having to do what someone else wants me to, to make you know I just don't want to do that myself most young people don't really want to do what they're told or they don't want to do someone else's idea they want to do their own idea so we encourage them to create their own journey and you know here, here's an activity here are some materials here's some tools here's some examples but we want you to make what you wanted to make you know and um if help is required then we'll help them if it's not required we won't help them it's like they, they can they're in control of what they do there's lots of different ways that we we reach out and or outreach to young people or local communities um I apply for funding. We run continual projects. So we run like weekly 3D pen clubs at youth centres and in schools, so after school clubs. We also are employed by festivals or galleries to provide experiences. And um, so activities for this could be like the cardboard crafting activity or the toy hacking activity or the 3D pen activity or even the talking pictures activity. And then um, young people approach us afterwards or, you know, over a period of time, if we've been working with them at the youth centre, you know, providing the drop-in activity, they'll, you know, after a while, we'll, we'll start conversing, we'll, we'll start discussing about what they're interested in and then, and then we'll kind of guide them on their journey. So nothing's predetermined and, and we, we kind of react to what the needs are for the young people. It's, it's not, you know... We, we might have a theme, we might not. It's, you know, it, it really does depend. Inclusion is important. And we, we try and make sure that our activities are not too complicated. By, by trade, by nature, by skill set. I mean, I, okay, let's just use myself as an example. I'm not a coder. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit dyslexic. <laughs> Reading and writing is, you know, I'm not going to be writing a book, okay? It's not my skill set. But um, but I know how to use apps. I know how to use technology. And I know how to do quite a lot of interesting things. So I guess we, we kind of work with what the young people are interested in. And, and we try and make sure that any activity we're providing is not, it's not too difficult. You know, um, I, I love Arduinos. I love coding and, and all that kind of, you know, all those maker activities. But... For a lot of young people, I think that's quite a hard learning curve and, and not everybody's going to be a coder. It's just as simple as that. So um, I'm really interested in um, exploring activities about hands on making and design and problem solving. Um, let me think an example would be a neighborhood planning project. So we would invite young people to come and make cardboard objects and design different narratives and stories and ideas for how a neighborhood could change and um and i guess that's you know out of cardboard that would be quite easy to do just keeping it simple experimenting is is key to success and um we really do encourage people to fail as well you know it's important to fail it's important to make mistakes it's important to overcome those mistakes and to and, to, and to, to move forward so um you know we, we kind of we, we celebrate not in a negative way but in a positive way if something doesn't work out you know it's, it's um because most things in life don't work out straight away it's it's several attempts several several different processes to achieve you know the final destination the goal and um i think i think maker activities uh, encourage young people to understand this way of living or, or way of doing things exploration wise it's more about okay so say you make a toy hack out of reused toys then you can craft it and then you can print it onto a t-shirt and then you can wear the t-shirt so the t-shirt becomes the end result the toy hack is something that will just fall apart and disintegrate and decay and and maybe that's not you know that's not that's not the important part the important part is that they've Okay, they've learned how to reuse materials and create an object, deconstruct, reconstruct. They might have then learned how to use Photoshop or something like that to edit a photographed image. Then they would have learned how to print 
the image onto a textiles garment or onto a, a, a surface or then they might have exhibited that in an exhibition. So there's quite a few steps there of, of the journey. Along that journey, there'll be a lot of failure as well. Like the printing didn't work, the color was wrong um, or, or making digital graphics and you know not saving something and having to do it all over again. It's all these little things that add up to the journey. But then when, you know, that's why it's quite important to showcase, I guess, um, with young people's artworks and exhibitions, because then they can see it out in the public realm, be it physically or digitally. But, um, but along that journey, there'll be a lot of failure and that's just all part of it. The most recent, I guess, big event was uh, with an organisation called the Towner Gallery in, in Eastbourne. And we were employed as an organisation to provide uh, activities for children, young people and families for a week. So we had a, a big downstairs space of the gallery and we provided interactive um, like an installation of objects and artifacts and interactions and uh, lots of maker activity, um, including 3D pens, the cardboard crafting, the scanning, textiles printing, um, 3D printed and, and 3D pen artworks that were uh, you know, on display, um, showing them how to uh, create a 3D object and then film it and then project it and create an installation. So it's all, there are loads of experiences, I guess. And um, a thousand people participated within a week, which is like the record number they've ever had, which is, which is great for you know, a gallery in a, in a quiet town on the coast. Um, that's one example. Um, other examples, we created cardboard cities and, um, and then we populated them with toy, toy hacks. And um, we've also used projection mapping software where um, people have um, created the cityscape and then we've used projectors and uh, other graphics to photograph the toy hacks and then project them onto the, onto the city. So creating an interactive experience. Um, we've also worked with digital artists. Um, there's a guy called Louis Daberville who uses uh, touch designer software. And um, we got people to, or participants, young, including young people to make toy hacks. And then um, they were photographed and then he created a, an interactive wall that you walk past and then this fireball opened up with these toys floating in space and stuff like that. So that was like a public art exhibition. So, I mean, there's loads of ways you can do this. And, you know, I mean, city regeneration projects, neighborhood planning, um, you're reusing materials, all, all kinds of, I guess, um, unity through struggle, like looking at what, young people are interested in as in or extinction rebellion anything like that I mean any of those sort of subjects where young people can um, find a way to explore or, or, or get their voice heard I would recommend starting simply and also I would recommend finding out the young people are interested in I mean every every community has got a different makeup of who the individuals are that make that community so you know it could be that you have a group of young people who are into into goth metal or something or into hip-hop or street culture or, or they're into um uh, role-playing like games you know like dungeons and dragons or whatever you want to call it you know it could be anything and then um finding out how maybe maker culture could inter interact with their um, identity or their or their tribe. I mean, we're all parts of tribes, so the subcultures of young people and communities really interest us. So we kind of work along those lines, finding out what they're interested in, and then we do a bit of research about maybe what might interest them. So we've asked a few questions. You know, if they're say, for instance, they're um, they're into making music or you know hip-hop culture street culture or, or, or indie bands i guess something you could do is make merchandise so it could be about making printed t-shirts and graphics and stuff like that so you could you could find out about that and maybe work along those lines if they were into um board games or you know like 
that kind of culture, then maybe you could use 3D printing to make um, little characters, you know, that kind of thing, or use 3D pens. Yeah, I mean, really, I think a lot of young people are into fashion, art and culture and music. So I explore those territories. <laughs> That's where I'm from, you know. <laughs>